In this video, I'll be performing a stress life analysis of this keyhole specimen. Full instructions or details of this example are in the PDF linked in the video description below. Let's go ahead and start Patron, which I've already gone ahead and done. And we'll create a new Patron database. On my desktop, I have a folder called uh, One Simple SN. Um, when you're in the folder, call your file any name you would like. Here I called it simply model.db. And let's go ahead and uh, import a Nastron model. So file, import, under source, go to Nastron input. And in the same video description, you'll find a second file that points to simple sn underscore v. Make sure to have that downloaded on your desktop or a folder somewhere. And uh, here I have this file in the same uh, working folder. So select it and apply. Patreon will then go ahead and import this model. I get a summary of what has been imported here in this window. And then here in the viewport, I see my actual mesh or my finite element model. Click model tree here just so we know what's been defined so far. Here we find a material, property, boundary conditions, and so on. If we try and turn on the plot, or not, rather the markers to display our boundary conditions, you'll see that we can't. The reason is because we have two load cases, one being the default one, which is the one being used right now, but it's completely empty of boundary conditions. Let's go ahead and switch to this untitled subcase and call it, or rather right click on it and make current. And now I can turn on my boundary condition markers as shown. Let's go ahead and begin defining our fatigue problem. Um, as I said before, this model is pretty much defined for linear static analysis, so we have to build on top of this by defining uh, fatigue properties. For material, we have one defined. Right-click on that. And so far for this material, we just have one model defined, a linear elastic constitutive model. Uh, click this and scroll down to where you find stress life. And here you see all your uh, boxes you have to type in data for. If we refer back to the PDF I mentioned, we have um, a table where it lets us know what values to type in. So here I know that the options should be standard parameters. Uh, it should be ferrous for material code, none and none for stress and curve type. Uh, the first item to enter is ultimate tensile strength. So that would be uh, 600 megapascals. For our stress range intercept, that would be uh, 8,948. Our first strength exponent would be negative 0.2. Transition point would be 2E8. And then our second strength exponent would be 0. Standard error of log is 0.137. And if we move this window up a little, we'll simply click OK here. And hit apply to make our modification. So now we see that here. We can right click on the same material and click modify. And you see the two constitutive models. Um, here I've right clicked and modified but you can right click and show properties and that's where you just see the properties without being able to modify them. So we've added an additional constitutive model to our material. Let's jump over to the analysis tab and click entire model. Here let's call the job name simple sn underscore v1 under solution type make sure we have linear static analysis set. Under solution parameters, let's go ahead and click fatigue parameters. We'll leave the defaults here as, or we'll leave the defaults as shown here. Stress units, MPA, absolute max principle, and result locations at the nodes. Click on stress life and simply click that or check it so we know to run an SN analysis. Click OK here. Under result output format, Click on OP2, so we produce results in an OP2 file as opposed to an XDB file. So again, check on OP2, click OK, OK here, and OK again. Under subcase, we have two subcase, or rather two subcases defined. This first subcase is using the default load case, which is empty. If we wanted to, we could select the default subcase and make it point to the untitled subcase and click apply. But here we've already has subcase where the devoted load case assigned to it is untitled SC1. So that's the one here in the model tree. So again, click on subcases here or click on untitled SC1 and click the load case untitled SC1. 
under output results, you notice that for this subcase, we only have stress, or rather the analysis will produce stress results. We want to also output fatigue results. Simply click that, and you'll notice it, will, it is added to the list here of output requests. If you want to remove it from the list, click delete it, and it's gone. Again, click it, and it gets dropped in this box. Hit OK here, and click Apply to confirm the overwrite, and click Cancel. Uh, before I move on to subcase select, let me go ahead and define um, a field. We'll need this when creating our cyclic load definition. If you go back to the load BC tab and click on create non-spatial, we'll call this field name unit load and we'll leave it in terms of time. And then for input data, we'll make this a four point uh, piece of data or piece or rather field. Click in 0 for T, 1 for T, 2, and 3. For the corresponding values, it will be 0, 1, negative 1, and 0. And here I've made a mistake, so simply click on the cell and type in the correct value and hit Enter. And make sure it's 0, 1, negative 1, 0, then 0, 1, 2, 3. Click OK and hit Apply. Now, Let's go back to the analysis tab and click entire model. Again, our job name is V1. We've gone to solution type, updated a subcase, and now I'll click on subcase select. Right now, this will go ahead and use uh, the default subcase that's using the default load case. But as we remember, there's nothing in the default load case, so it's a, a worthless subcase at this point. So click that to remove it from the list. Click on untitled SC1, which is pointing to the Untitled, untitled SC1 load case, which does have boundary conditions, so make sure it's here on the list. Click Define Fatigue Load Sequences, and here we'll define our cyclic load definition. So under event name, event 1, cell subcase, simply select the, this national subcase. For time history, you'll see that field we just defined a moment ago and simply drop it here. And now this defines event one. If you want to create a second event, simply click up in the arrow and you have a new event here available for you to go ahead and create. So let me go ahead and just call it, um, or input the same data. But this time I'll call it a uh, other event. And now let's actually use um, one of these events we just created here. Here on the left, right click on load sequence. Let's add a new sequence. In addition to this, let's add a new event. Here you see two events defined. Um, we want to use this one. The other one uh, just shows that to make a point. The point being that this part of the window is used to create these events here on the right. Um, so once I select the one event I want to use, click Apply, and now it's been loaded here in this uh, event. Click OK. Click OK on this window, and now we're ready to perform our stress and fatigue analysis. So let me go ahead and click Apply. The one unique thing of, about what we're doing right now is uh, we're doing the stress and fatigue analysis simultaneously. Before the process was, we would perform our stress analysis, then we would have to manually move our stress results to fatigue program, and then perform the fatigue analysis there. But since uh, we have the unique capability of Nashville being able to do fatigue analysis, uh, we do it all in one go as shown here. Once the analysis is done, click on Attach Output To. This is where we go ahead and point to the uh, result file. And you notice that right now it's not, it's not anywhere to be seen. So now what I have to go ahead and do is uh, remedy this. I suspect that when I was defining the solution type, if I go back to Solution Parameters and click Result Output Format, it uh, returned back to XDB. It should have been OP2, so I'll simply click OK here. And OK here. And let's go ahead and run this analysis. And you know, I should double check and make sure it's been defined properly here. Yeah, everything's been defined. I know I'm performing a stress analysis, which is checked on. And right now, if I go back to attach output 2, I should see a result file. Uh, I can manually click it here. And again, select result file and um, click that result file and hit apply. 
you know while it's doing that let's go ahead and uh, look at what we should expect here if we look at this we have a log base 10 to fatigue life of um and that's not the right one I believe it was 5.34 or 5.5.64. It's the value or the fatigue life uh, log base 10 is uh, what we should get. So if we go back to Patron, we've uh, attached the results. Let's go and jump to the results tab. Click on fringe. Here you see two result cases, one being for the linear static case. So here we have our stress results. What we're interested are in these results here, simple SN event all. This is where we can look at our log of life. And here we see what we um, got in the documentation, which is a 5.64. And um, that's how you would go ahead and perform this example.